The air bites shrewdly. It is very cold. It is a nipping and an eager air. What hour now? I think it lacks of twelve. No, it is struck. Indeed. I heard it not. It then draws near the season wherein the spirit held his wont to walk. What does this mean, my lord? The king doth wake tonight and takes his rouse, keeps wassail in the swaggering upspring reels, and as he drains his draughts of Rhenish down, the kettle drum and trumpet thus bray out the triumph of his pledge. Is it a custom? Aye, Mary is. To my mind, though I am native here, and to the manner born, it is a custom more honoured in the breach than the observance. This heavy-headed rebel east and west makes us traduced and taxed of other nations. They clap us drunk and... Look, my lord! It comes. <sighs> Angels and ministers of grace, defend us. Be thou a spirit of health, or goblin damned. Bring with the airs from heaven, or blasts from hell. Be thy intents wicked or charitable. Thou comest in such a questionable shape. But I will speak to thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, King, Father, Royal Dane. Oh, answer me. Let me not burst in ignorance, but tell why thy canonized bones, hersed in death, have burst their seerments. Why the sepulchre, when we saw thee quietly and earned, hath oped his ponderous and marble jaws to cast thee up again. What may this mean, that thou, dead course again in complete steel, revisits thus the glimpses of the moon, making night hideous, and we fools of nature so horribly to shake our dispositions with thoughts beyond the reaches of our souls? Say, why is this? Wherefore? What should we do? It beckons you to go away with it, as if it's some impartment to desire to you alone. Look with what courteous action it waves you to a more removed ground, but do not go with it. No, by no means. It will not speak. Then will I follow it. Do not, my lord. Why, what should be the fear? I do not set my life at a pin's fee. And for my soul, what can it do to that being a thing immortal as itself? It waves me forth again. I'll follow it. What of a you to the flood, my lord? Or to the dreadful summit of a cliff? That beetle's orders face into the sea, and there it assumes some other horrible form, which might deprive your sovereignty of reason and draw you into madness. It waves me still. Go on, I'll follow thee. You shall not go, my lord. Hold off your hands. Be ruled, you shall not go. My fate cries out and makes each petty artery of this body as hardy as the Nemean lion's nerve. Still am I called. And hand me, gentlemen. By heaven, I make a ghost of him that lets me. I say, away. Go on. I'll follow thee. He waxes desperate with imagination. Let's follow. Tis not fit thus to obey him. Have after. To what issue will this come? Something is rotten in the state of Denmark. Heaven will direct it. Hey, let's follow him. Whither wilt thou lead me? Speak. I'll go no further. I will. My hour is almost come when I, to sulfurous and tormenting flames, must render up myself. Alas, poor ghost. Pity me not, but lend thy serious hearing to what I shall unfold. Speak. I am bound to hear. So art thou to revenge when thou shalt hear. What? I am thy father's spirit. Doom for a certain term to walk the night, and for the day confined to fast in fires, till the foul crimes done in my days of nature are burnt and purged away. But that I am forbid to tell the secrets of my prison house, I could a tale unfold, whose lightest word would harrow up thy soul, freeze thy young blood, make thy two eyes like stars start from their spheres, I knotted and combined it locks to part, and each particular hair to stand and end like quills upon the fretful porpentine. But this eternal blazon must not be to ears of flesh and blood. List, list, 
all list. If thou didst ever thy dear father love, O oh God, revenge is foul and most unnatural murder. Murder! Murder most foul as in the best it is, but this most foul, strange and unnatural. Haste me to know it, that I, with wings as swift as meditation or the thoughts of love, may sweep to my revenge. I find the act, and duller shouldst thou be than the fat weed that roots itself in ease on Lethe wharf. Wouldst thou not stir in this now hamlet here? It is given out that sleeping in my orchard a serpent stung me, so the whole year of Denmark is by a forged process of my death rankly abused. But no, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Oh, my prophetic soul, my uncle! Aye, that incestuous, that adulterate beast, with witchcraft of his wit, with traitorous gifts, oh, wicked wit and gifts that had the power so to seduce, one to his shameful lust. The will of my most seeming virtuous queen. Huh? But soft, methinks I sent the morning air. Brief let me be, sleeping within mine orchard, my custom always of the afternoon, upon my secure hour, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed heaven and in a vial, and in the porches of mine ears did pour the leprous distillment whose effect holds such an enmity with blood of man, that swift as quicksilver, it courses through the natural gates and alleys of the body. Thus was I, sleeping by a brother's hand, of life, of crown, of queen, at once dispatched, cut off even in the blossoms of my sin, unhouseled, disappointed, unannealed, no reckoning made, but sent to my account with all my imperfections on my head. Oh, horrible. Oh, horrible. Most horrible. If thou hast nature in thee, bear it not. Let not the royal bed of Denmark be a couch for luxury and damned incest. But howsoever thou pursuest this act, Taint not thy mind, nor let thy soul contrive against thy mother aught. Leave her to heaven, and to those thorns that in her bosom lodge to prick and sting her, fare thee well at once. The glowworm shows the matting to be near, and begins to pale his uneffectual fires. Adieu, adieu. Hamlet, remember me. Oh, all you host of heaven, O oh, earth, what else? And shall I couple hell? Hold, hold my heart, and you, my sins, grow not instant old, but bear me stiffly up. Remember thee. Ay, thou poor ghost, while memory holds a seat in this distracted globe, remember thee! Yea, from the table of my memory I wipe away all trivial fond records, all sores of books, all forms, all precious past that youth and observation copied there, and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter, yes, by heaven. O oh, most pernicious woman, Oh, villain, villain, smiling, damned villain! My tables. Meet it as I set it down, that one may smile and smile and be a villain. At least I'm sure it may be so in Denmark. So, Uncle, there you are. Now to my word, it is adieu, adieu. Remember me. I have sworn. My lord! My lord! The Hamlet! Heaven secure him! So be it. Hello, my lord! Hello, boy! Come, boy, come! How is my noble lord? What news, my lord? Oh, wonderful. 
Good, my lord. Tell it. No, you will reveal it. Not I, my lord, by heaven. Not I, my lord. How say you then? Would heart of man once think it, but you be secret? Aye, by Aye. heaven, my lord. There's ne'er a villain dwelling in all Denmark. But he's an arrant knave. There needs no ghost, my lord, come from the grave to tell us this. Why, right. You were the right. And so, without more circumstance at all, I hold it fit that we shake hands and part. You, as your business and desire shall point you, for every man has business and desire, such as it is. And for mine own poor part, look you, I will go pray. These are but wild and whirling words, my lord. I'm sorry they offend you heartily. Yes, Faith, heartily. There's no offence, my lord. Yes, by St. Patrick, but there is Horatio and much offence too. Touching this vision here... <laughs> It is an honest ghost, that let me tell you, for your desire to know what is between us all mastered as you may. And now, good friends, as you are friends, scholars, and soldiers, give me one poor request. What is, my lord? We will. Never make known what you have seen tonight. My lord, we will not. Nay, but swear it. In faith, my lord, not I. Not I, my lord, in faith. Upon my soul. But we have sworn, my lord, already. Indeed. Upon my sword, indeed. Aha. Sayst thou so? Art thou there, true penny? Come on, you hear this fellow in the cellarage consent to swear. Propose the oath, my lord. Never to speak of this that you have seen. Swear by my sword. Swear. <laughs> Take it a big way, then we shift our ground. Come hither, gentlemen, and lay our hands again upon my sword. Never to speak of this that you have heard. Swear by my sword. Swear by his sword. <laughs> well said, old mole. Canst work in the earth so fast a worthy pioneer. Once more and move, good friends. Oh, day and night, but this is wondrous strange. And therefore, as a stranger, give it welcome. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. But come, here, as before, never so help you mercy, how strange or odd soe'er I bear myself, as I perchance hereafter shall think meet to put an antic disposition on. That you at such time see me, never shall, with arms encumbered thus, or this head shake, or by pronouncing of some doubtful phrases. Well, well, we know, we could, and if we would, or the be, and if they might, or if we list to speak, or other such ambiguous giving out to note that you know aught of me, this not to do. So grace and mercy it is most needs help you. Swear. Rest. Rest. Perturbed spirit. So, gentlemen... With all my love, I do commend me to you. And what so poor a man as Hamlet is may do to express his love and friending to you, God willing, shall not lack. Let us go in together. And still your fingers on your lips, I pray. The time is out of joint. Oh, cursed spite that ever I was born to set it right. Nay, hey, come, let's go together. <laughs> <laughs>